started with this agenda um, as we ex are expecting a few more of our directors to come in. So with that, um, Director Wilbright, would you mind leading us in oh, the... Wait, wait, wait. Oh, I thought, oh, I beg your pardon. Yes, yes, uh, Pat Simon, good morning. Could you please do us the honor? Much better selection. <laughs> Before that, if you'll come up, please, I just sure. have something I'd like to share with our group this morning. Uh, Pat Simon is a 30-year Army veteran uh, who served on active duty, National Guard, and the Reserves. He also served combat tour of duty in Iraq in 2009. That's fantastic, thank you. Thank you. Pat is also an award-winning journalist, as we all know. Um, he has been telling stories about veterans across the world and here in the coastal bin especially. Uh, you can watch uh, Pat's Veteran in Focus on uh, Tuesday nights on Channel 6. So thank you so much. If thank you. Would you. Please do the honor of leading us in the Pledge it's of Allegiance. It's my Day. honor and pleasure, thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you so much. Have a great day. You're welcome. We appreciate you. Thank you. Okay. Now, with that, Ms. Marisa, can you please call roll? Present. Jasper Miller. Present. Jasper Carlton. Gary Ellis. Present. Armando Gonzalez. Eric Ramirez. Aaron Munoz. Peter Calderon. Here. Matt Wilbright. Present. And Director Gonzalez is online. Mr. Ms. Marisa, also it looks like we have uh, Judge Mondo online. Um, we have uh, Director uh, Jimenez and Chairman Leindecker online as well. Thank you. Okay. So we should, um, we can't do the safety briefing either. Okay. So as we wait for one more member to come in, can we go ahead and have you share the safety briefing with us? Mr. Montiel. That quorum need to be in person? We're over six. All we need to have the in person yes, for a quorum. Good morning, everyone. My name is John Esparza. I'm a safety and security administrator here for the CCRTA, and today I'll be giving you all a short safety briefing. In the event of an emergency, we will exit the boardroom to my right, your left, proceed to the west stairwell, down to the first floor, where we will exit through the west side doors. Once outside, we will continue to the clock tower adjacent to the transfer station. Marisa will account for all the board members. I will be the last one out to ensure everyone gets out safely. Three things to remember. Please do not use the elevator. Please do not return until the all clear has been given. And if we need to shelter in place, we will do so in the west side stairwell. Thank you all. Do we have any receipt of conflicts of interest? And please let the record reflect that Director Coleman is here. Thank you. Um, with that, how, uh, how does our public comment sign-up sheet look? Okay, there were three received online, and those copies are provided to each director and will be reflected in the minutes. And there is one signed up currently. Let me get this one to you. Mr. Lamont Taylor uh, with HRA CAFP. Good morning, Mr. Taylor. Good morning. My name is Lamont Taylor, and I'm representing the state, the Hillcrest Resident Association, and Corpus Christi Citizens Alliance for Fairness and Progress. Um, I have, uh, I guess, two issues that I need to bring forward, forward, and I think one has been resolved, and that's basically the frequency on. Um, number 12, Route 12, and I understand that you guys um, uh, implemented a new um, uh, frequency 
scheduled for that particular route um, this Monday, so I, I would applaud you for that. The second issue that I have is uh, being, um, I guess, a former employee and a former board member. I have um, traveled the streets of Corpus Christi, fortunately or unfortunately, uh, and I get an opportunity to look at bus stops and the bus stops and lack of shelters that I see, particularly on the west side, which I am um, frequent. And I see that, uh, unfortunately, I understand that you guys have, have a five-year plan, and I worked on a five-year plan when I was here. However, I've seen a lot of shelters, too many to, to name, and I'll, next time I come in, I will have the routes and, and the location where there is a slab and there's no shelter, or there's uh, a bench and no shade. And um, since we are approaching the summer months, I think it will be um, detrimental to, to uh, the, I guess, the ridership, those individuals who have to stand out in the sun or in the rain um, wouldn't, without any shelter. So, um, and I understand that there's a lot of construction going on, but that's still no uh, excuse for not having uh, shelters. Thank you very much. Thank you. We appreciate everything you do for the community. <clears throat> so, with that, um, do we have anyone else signed up for public comment? Uh, with that, we're going to jump ahead a little bit down our agenda to recess for executive session. It's. Excuse me, we oh. cannot uh, do that. We have uh, the oh. interpreter. Oh. Let's give you a break. Okay, I beg your pardon. Um, with that, we will jump to the next item. And we have some awards today uh, under awards and recognition. If you will, Mr. Rendon, take the mic. Rita will do the uh, first two. Good morning, everyone. Rita Patrick. I am here today to talk about our uh, two Adwill Awards we received at the 23 Marketing and Communication Workshop. And these awards were uh, awards that recognized the top marketing efforts for transit uh, agencies on a national level. So we're real excited about uh, receiving those. One was the best marketing communication on workforce development. It was the 2022 Employee Appreciation Day. This award recognized the efforts of RTA and our annual employee appreciation. We're proud to recognize our workforce and celebrate with them multiple times a year. And as a matter of fact, tomorrow is a uh, day of appreciation that we're going to hold with the employees. I want to thank our HR department, my marketing staff, and leadership for helping make our uh, employees' appreciation day special. So we want to thank you regarding that. Our second marketing award was to support ridership with the print media. And of course, everyone knows our 22 Buck Days wrap. Well, it won, uh, was recognized by APTA for its vibrance and significance to the community. Uh, we also won two first place trophies during the parade, and uh, it allowed uh, CCRTA the opportunity to celebrate with the community. I want to thank um, MDR Advertising Agency for their graphic design and uh, our incredible operations department who puts together all of the other things that make the bus look spectacular and come alive. So I'd like to um, you know, say thank you to everyone again, the leadership, the board, uh, the executive staff, and all of our employees that helped make these two things possible. Thank That's you. wonderful. Thank you, Rita. Uh, the next item we have the, um, sorry, I didn't bring my glasses today. The APTA uh, Adwill Award presented to CCRTA for best print media. Is that the one we just yeah, did? Yeah, it's, uh, it's the employee recognition, Ms. Uh, Delia Tristan, MV Transportation. Can you oh, come yes. up here? And thank you. And the, it looks like we did the B first, and then we need to go back mm -hmm. to the first award. No, we, we did the first two. Okay, thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Daniel Cristan. Uh, yes, uh, Distinguished Hero Award. On Tuesday, March 14th, at uh, approximately uh, 6.15, B-Line driver, Ms. Delia Cristan, was uh, driving on Gallagher and Townsend when she noticed a toddler in the middle 
of the street walking onto the main road. It was a cold morning, and she immediately pu pulled over, ran to rescue the toddler as other vehicles was coming down the road. She immediately called dispatch, authorities were called, and the toddler was reunited with her family. You know, you see this on, on TV, on, on other cities, other states, and national news where just a young child exits the house at two, three o'clock in the morning and is found blocks away. We're, we're blessed that Ms. Delia Cristan was at the uh, location at the right time and saved this uh, toddler. We have a video to show what, what happened. It's scary, and it was um, a great moment for, for us to save a life. Uh, Ms. Delia Cristan has been a driver for the B-Line, uh, the paratransit group of MV, uh, uh, for more than three decades, starting in 1988. Maybe some of you were not even born out there in the audience, but <laughs> uh, Ms. Cristan has, has never had a preventable uh, accident since working for MV, and that is uh, <laughs> outstanding for over 30 years. Years is just. Um, I hear that mm -hmm. very, very few in the industry uh, c can do that safe driving. Mm -hmm. Mr. Gitan has has been married to her husband for 38 years, has two daughters, two sons, 18 grandkids, and 22 mm -hmm. grandchildren. She loves her job and does it well every day. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, I can't. I can't even put into words how wonderful you handled that situation and acted quickly and safely for the passengers and for the pedestrian toddler and we can't thank you enough. What a great, great way to represent the agency and the community and what a wonderful performance. Thank you, you. you want to say something? No, we're good. <laughs> thank you. We're going we're gonna to take a picture with you.
like he's online, so we can just. Okay, so we'll just jump ahead. We can look at approving the board minutes. Please stand by, everyone. <laughs> We'll go through the um, board minutes. Yes. Uh, Marisa, will you please let the record reflect that we have uh, Director Mamie here? Thank you. Thank you. Now that we have a quorum, we're going to go to agenda item number six, uh, discussion and possible action to approve the board minutes uh, from the March the 1st director's meeting. You all received the minutes in your packet prior to today. <coughs> Do we have a, a motion so to move approve? Madam Chair. The minutes? I'm sorry. So moved. Okay. I'll second. So second. First and second. Uh, first, we have Director Coleman, and second, we have Director Mamie. <coughs> Thank you. Okay. All in favor of approving the minutes from March the 1st, please say aye. 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 Any objection? Aye. Thank you, Vice Chair Jimenez, we heard you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, any objections? No? Motion passes. We're going to move forward with item number nine, the consent agenda items. Uh, the following items are routine or administrative in nature and have been discussed previously by the board or committees. The board has been furnished the support documentation on these items. Uh, what should I read all the items? Items A through D, we have uh, action to award a three-year contract to SHI Government Solutions for Microsoft Office, Office 365. Uh, item number B, we have action to exercise option year two with Hanson Professional Services for general architecture, architectural and engineering design services. Item C, action to award and contra on con a contract to Marshall Company, LTD for the construction of the new Port Ayers transfer station. And Item D, we have action to approve the purchase of seven ENC 35-foot CNG buses from the state of Georgia DOAS contract. Uh, does anyone wish to pull any of the consent items A through D for discussion? D, please. Okay, we'll pull item D. Um, so should we vote on? Yeah, so we will take a motion for approval on items A through C. Does anyone have any comment or a motion to approve? I'll make the motion. I'll second the motion. Okay. I, I believe I heard uh, Vice Chair Jimenez for the second. Uh, so thank you. Director Canales for the first motion and Director uh, Vice Chair Jimenez for the second. Uh, if there's no further discussion, all in favor of approving items A through C, please say aye. 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 Are there any objections? Aye. aye. Thank you, uh, Director Gonzalez and Vice Chair Jimenez. Uh, so I don't, and no objections I heard. Item A through C passes on the consent agenda items. With that, uh, can we please uh, have uh, Thank you, Derek, if you'll come up and, and talk through item D on the CNG buses. Uh, good morning, everyone. I can either go through the, the, the whole slide deck or do you have a specific question you would like me to answer? Yeah, uh, I can just go through a direct question. A couple years ago when we looked at CNGs, we had major problems with them overheating and we just determined that CNG was not the best uh, method going forward. Is that something different with these and I'm just not forgetting, I'm forgetting from before? It's the, the cutaway vehicles that the CNG was not the best method because of the overheating. With the, the large buses, we haven't had the same types of issues. It's a more mature technology. The vehicles have adequate cooling capacity. 
these buses would utilize the same Cummins engine that we're utilizing now in, in our vehicle. So we're very familiar with uh, maintaining them. But Roger in the platform took care of the cooling issues that we had on the smaller ones. Yeah, the, the smaller chassis, the engines aren't specific built. They try to convert them to work and it just doesn't work out very well. And there's lack of cooling capacity. That's, That's all I had. I'm good. Thank you, Director Wilbright. Do we have any other questions? With that, do I hear a motion to approve consent agenda item D, action to approve the purchase of seven ENC 35 foot CNG buses from the state of Georgia? So moved. DOA's contract. Thank you. Director Wilbright has the first second. motion and the second with Director Mamie. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you, Vice Chair Jimenez. Any opposed? Okay. The motion passes. Thank you all. Go ahead and adjourn. Thank you all for your patience today. I'm doing a little double duty up here. Uh, with that, let's uh, move to item 10 on the agenda, please, uh, with committee chair reports from admin and finance. Director Canales, do you have anything to report? Uh, nothing new to report from admin and finance. Uh, looking forward to our next meeting with some uh, hopefully great things coming up. Good, good. Likewise, thank you. Uh, operations and capital projects, Director Salazar. Well, just uh, the news of the excitement of the two bus stops that are looked at on schedule. Uh, quality of work looks really good and uh, look forward to the new project that we got coming up thank at Fort Edge. Thank you, with lots of shade. With lots of shade, Mr. Taylor. <laughs> um, thank There's you so lots much. Of shade. Yes, yes. Um, rural and small cities, we have myself. I don't have anything to report. Um, I have a question. We are at the beginning of the spring still. How are we looking for the uh, renewing the service through uh, Ramses Pass to Port A? Does that come online in, in May? Yes, it will go active the, the Friday before Memorial Day, and then it concludes at the very end of September. Thank you. Okay, any other questions for the rural and small cities? Uh, just on the, uh, for the small cities, uh, we are looking at a date in the middle part of uh, May uh, after the Board of Directors um, authorized the um, uh, emergency preparedness plan. Then we'll meet with the small city mayors and uh, address uh, that plan to them at that time. Thank you. Um, Director Munoz, I don't see online. Is there any update from our director here, uh, Mr. Rendon, on the legislative? Uh, we, we were in Austin a couple of weeks ago, um, just like our Chairman uh, Hunter uh, requested for us to um, go and visit uh, our Coastal Bend uh, delegation. We did that, and everything is looking uh, okay right now. We will be presenting our, our project to the, uh, the county on uh, May the 12th, Wednesday. Another, another brief update, uh, the Chairman of Transportation, Terry Canales, was in town a couple, last weekend or the weekend before, uh, and myself, uh, Director Woolbright, and Director Coleman all were able to sit at his table, uh, talk about some of our RTA issues, and uh, not all together, but we were all, you know, hoping for a, uh, <laughs> you know, just to you know, have his ear for a little bit, and uh, hopefully next uh, time we go to Austin, we can all be there. Uh, Director Munoz wanted to attend, but I made a mistake and gave him the wrong date. But otherwise, <laughs> he would have been there. So he was actually there Sunday in a suit and everything. Okay. Thank you. I, I'm looking forward to that, and if we can just have staff give the board members as much notice as possible when, when we're gonna do that, um, so we can all well. make accommodations. Yep. So it's it's session is yeah, moving uh, quickly. Uh, yes, direct. Uh, yes, chairman. Uh, uh, real quick, uh, the recommendation we got was to meet after Easter sometime, and we'll coordinate that as fast as we can so we can get it on all your calendar. Thank you. <laughs> that would be great. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other comments on the committee chair reports? Um, with that. Okay, so with that, I'm going to adjourn. Um, I need to read, let's see, what did I do with it?
bear with me. There we go. Um, we're going to adjourn for executive session under section 551.074 of the Texas Open Meetings Act. The board of directors will be going into closed session in order to discuss agenda item number six, discussion in closed session on the selection of a new CEO and possible action thereafter in open session. With that, I'm adjourning at 8.57.
convening executive uh, regular session at 9:35 a.m. Uh, we have no action to vote from anything executive session related. So with that, we will proceed to Id agenda item uh, 11, presentation on 2022 year in review. Mr. Rindon. Started with the video. <clears throat> The Corpus Christi Regional Transportation Authority's mantra for 2022 was adelante, forward, to enhance the rider experience. Safety remains our top priority, and CCRTA increased the number of bus shelters throughout the service area in 2022. We also laid the groundwork for future service developments within Corpus Christi's south side and west side areas. Through the phenomenal work of our dedicated employees, CCRTA was named Texas's Outstanding Metropolitan Transit System for 2022. CCRTA also received national recognition by APTA for bus security excellence for our effort to ensure the safety of our riders and employees. Operations is the heart of our organization. Together, our operations staff works to enhance quality of life and further economic prosperity. Providing accessible and efficient public transportation is essential to the communities we serve. We provided 2.8 million passenger trips through 33 fixed routes in 2022. This led to an overall increase of almost 20% when compared to 2021. In addition, CCRTA partnered with military and local stakeholders to provide access to training, free medical services, emergency shelters, and special events throughout the year. Our team also added and adjusted services in order to better serve our growing Southside community. Our administrative staff continues to prioritize transparency while also ensuring a financially sound organization. While costs continue to rise, CCRTA maintained a balanced operating budget of $59.7 million. For our efforts, we received two prestigious national awards from the Government Finance Officers Association. We also allocated $2.8 million to the City of Corpus Christi through our Street Improvements Program. Since 1996, CCRTA has provided nearly $52 million to the City of Corpus Christi to help rebuild the streets we share. Our capital programs and customer services efforts are key to the overall customer experience. Accessibility is crucial to a modern transit network. CCRTA's Shelter Expansion Program is working to install 300 new solar-powered shelters across our service area. An additional 75 bus shelters will be installed by 2025. In addition, CCRTA is installing two new super stops at Del Mar College Oso Creeks campus located on Yorktown and Rod Field, helping connect our Southside population to our transportation system. CCRTA is developing an ultra-modern transfer station at the heart of the city's west side. The Port Ayers Transfer Station will provide safe and reliable transportation as a central hub for the west side community. And as always, we strive to continuously deliver high-quality customer service and value to our riders. Executive Affairs engages with key policymakers as an advocate for the public transportation industry. Our Managing Director of Executive Affairs continues to advocate for the public transportation industry with key policymakers while fostering a strong foundation of goodwill with legislative officials. Safety and security ensures the safety of all customers, employees, and guests. Through a new employee safety training orientation and an increased security presence, CCRTA has worked to proactively reduce potential accidents and incidents. To reach our goals, CCRTA worked with local law enforcement and federal agencies throughout 2022. These positive relationships have led to national recognition from APTA. Marketing and communication are key to promoting CCRTA's public image and staying engaged with our community. In 2022, CCRTA hosted more than 25 press conferences, special events, and ribbon cuttings, and took part in more than 50 outreach events with community partners. 
CCRTA's marketing campaigns earned two national APTA AdWheel Awards, five regional spotlight awards from SWATA, and two first place trophies from the Buck Days Parade. Quality transportation requires quality employees. CCRTA held multiple employee appreciation events and training opportunities throughout the year in order to attract and retain our outstanding workforce. The mental health and physical wellness of our employees is a top priority. We continue to focus on employee health through our Be Healthy program, which will continue to grow and expand. CCRTA is developing a transportation system for the future. In 2022, we worked with Nelson Nygaard Consulting Associates on our long range transit plan. Our GoPass mobile app successfully launched in 2022, offering riders the option to plan and pay for their trips all on one app. CCRTA is excited to be hosting the Texas Transit Association's State Conference, Expo, and Rodeo this year. This event will showcase CCRTA as a champion transit organization and provide economic benefits to our local businesses. On behalf of Chairman Dan Leyendecker and the CCRTA Board of Directors, CCRTA will continue to provide an integrated system of innovative, accessible, and efficient public transportation services. Turning everyday challenges into opportunities is CCRTA's unified goal all while continuing to enhance the rider experience by moving forward, adelante. That's wonderful. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, Rita. Directors, um, 2022 was a challenging year coming out of COVID for our organization. Our year, year in review shows how important leadership, directors, and employees are to providing such a crucial service to our community each and every day. Robert, Sandy, and Christina brought the finance part of it and made sure that we're utilizing our money right. Sharon and Tomas showed how important it is for special projects be completed on time, especially the solar uh, shelters that are lit up at night and to make our customers feel safe waiting for uh, the bus. Angelina and jo Joanna doing their very best hiring uh, good operators, staff, and which is a challenge in the last few years. Director um, uh, Derek and Michael in, in transportation, uh, trying to keep our operators on time so our customers can get to work on time, and they do a lot more than that. Marisa, keeping us in line. <laughs> and on schedule, especially me. Thank you, Marisa. And myself and, and my uh, department, uh, Beth and, and uh, John Esparza, just to maintain the best customer service that we can and keep them safe, our, our tenants here and then the community. And then uh, Rita at the end, uh, which uh, her and her team uh, produce and edit this video. And I don't know how she did it, but I, I think it was a well done video that she compact 12 months and, and six and a half minutes. Uh, I think it was done well. She stayed up late, did it, uh, edit and change it and photos and we supply the information. At the end of the day, it was a whole team effort, but Rita, thank you for your team. It, it, I think this is a, uh, every year you improve in, in the year in review to tell our story to this community and a job well, well done, big team. Thank you. Um, just to give you a little, uh, update on uh, our, we have finished our application for our grant that is going to be submitted early part of next week and um, it is due on April the 13th. We'll do that three or four days um, early. And just a reminder that our conference starts on Tuesday with a golf tournament uh, at 12 if any of the board members want to participate or just even attend for a while. Uh, we do have lunch from 11 to 12. And it will go on to Saturday uh, on the 15th, which we will do a rodeo in the morning. Uh, and then our um, managing director of public relations, Rita, has a little bit more news. Can you come up? Uh, good morning again. A couple of days ago, I received some notices from APTA 
that we have won two Certificates of Merit awards for safety and security. And these awards recognize the top program in programs in the nation that address safety and security. Uh, the Certificate of Merit for Bus Security Excellence increased bus security presence. That's one of them. Uh, RTA's effort to increase our security at all our transfer stations and facilities have led to a decrease in incidents. The safety of our customers and employees is our top priority. And thanks goes to our acting CEO, who's head of security, and his staff uh, of law enforcement and security officers. And you might can explain a little bit about what they do. Yes, in reference to the Bus Security Excellent Award, uh, we have started and we continue to uh, do bus rides with our police officers every day on Route 27. Somebody uh, boards the bus in Robstown, comes to Corpus, uh, does patrol here at the transfer station, and then goes back. So that's every day, either in the morning or in the evening. Also, we have police officers that work for us that do uh, Route 29 that goes to the uh, to the mall area, south side, and to Molina area, and also across the bridge. So we, we want to show the presence of our law enforcement that are in, in the bus, not just on transfer stations. And we also have security guards working 24 hours at this location, this building. And we have them from 7 AM to 7 PM at all transfer stations. The show of law enforcement, the show of security, just makes our customers uh, feel safe when they're utilizing our system. And then for the emergency management, we communicate very well with the city and the county. And when there's an event going on, we staff the EOC office at the city and the county. And we also do a uh, update of the emergency management plan to the small cities in, in May. And that would be happening, like I said earlier, in the middle part of, of the month. We don't. We don't go around saying that we're the best transit uh, authority here in, in the state of Texas or even in the nation, but we, we do do our very, very best every day to keep our, our customers, our, our staff, and this community safe. And that's um, our main goal. The foundation of this organization starts with the board of directors. And then we, we add the uh, managing directors, and then directors, and then uh, the frontline employees. And it's like a pyramid. And at the top of the pyramid is our customers. Everything that we do in this organization every day, even on weekends, is to keep our customers safe and have a great uh, transportation experience. Thank you. Yes, and the second one is on our merit for emergency management and uh, what our staff does with the city, the county, the small city on preparing our communities for in case of a hurricane, we prepare every year. And I can't tell you how important uh, our operations plays in th with that uh, within the city. Uh, Derek, Gordon, Wes, they do an outstanding job with this. And without them, I think that uh, we couldn't get it done. And we uh, appreciate everyone that participates in that. You know, I just also want to say thank you to the, to the B team. Uh, it's, it's a united team, uh, board of directors. I need you to know that that every day we, we do, like I said, our very best. And it's, it's the unity that we bring to the <coughs> board of directors every month, you know, every day, every committee meeting. So uh, I just want to say again, thank you for <coughs> all the, um, the B team members, directors in this, in this organization. Thank so you. these awards will, uh, we're not supposed to be announced publicly, so I can't go to the press or anything. They just wanted me to let us know, but they're gonna be, uh, presented to us in, at the uh, Mobility co Conference in Minneapolis, which is April 23rd through the 26th. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Great job. Um, may we, uh, uh, Ms. Montez, uh, for the RCAT activities, if you would like to give us your report, please. Yes, Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Sharon Montes, uh, Managing Director of Capital Programs and customer services. So this uh, update is covering the meeting uh, that was held March 16th. Basically, the items I presented, including February CEO's report, uh, I also discussed the fact that we were submitting 
for the Lono Emission Grant Program and the grant program for buses and bus facilities for a, a new Robstown station in the area. And then I also um, showed them the B-Line operations metrics. Um, so the passengers per hour for January was still a little below the standard, um, but I know we had some rough weather in January. Uh, no denials, miles between roll calls is above the standard of 13,000 uh, at 13,216. Monthly wheelchair boardings was 3,680. Basically, upcoming RCAP meetings, uh, April, we will not have a meeting. Our next meeting will be May 18th at noon on a Thursday, and then that follows with the June 15th meeting as well. And everyone is invited if they would like to attend. And that concludes my pre uh, presentation, Madam Chair. Thank you, yes, appreciate that. Any questions? Okay, shall we move to Mr. Saldana on the February 2023 financial report? Oh, he's sorry. Not, he's not Thank here. Thank you. To, well, yeah, what he, a wonderful replacement. <laughs> he's not here today. I just want to say uh, keep Robert Saldana in your prayers. Uh, his brother passed away a few days ago. Okay. But uh, we have Sandy to report. Thank you. And Definitely. Good morning, my Senator name is Sandy. Condolences, I'm the Director of Finance, and I'm bringing you the results of the uh, February uh, financial uh, report. Um, the highlights uh, for, for the month of February is bus advertising uh, at 135.52% of baseline. Investment income, very impressive, at 405.86% of baseline. And Staple Street uh, center leases at 100% of baseline. Next slide. Our uh, snapshot of our summaries of revenues and expenses um, reflects uh, total revenues at 3.696292 with expenses at 3526817 uh, resulting in revenues over expenses of 169479 Next slide. Uh, categories. Uh, just uh, outlining or listing uh, the revenue streams that uh, comprise our revenues. We see that on your uh, last column of actual to baseline, uh, most of those uh, revenue uh, uh, centers are at or above the baseline. Next slide. Um, the operating versus non-operating just gives you the uh, groups, the uh, revenues into operating revenues, which is 102,452, and the non-operating revenues that came in at 3,140,698. Sales tax, of course, being the biggest uh, revenue uh, stream that we receive. Next slide. Where did our money go? Well, most of our money goes to Salaries and wages, which is about is 40 percent. Benefits about 10 percent. So 50 percent goes to personnel costs. Then the next uh, large cost center is the uh, purchase transportation at 23 percent, and the rest of the items are GNA, general and administrative expenses. Next slide. Uh, we have to present. Your expenses or the expenses, uh, Gatsby requires us to present them in um, object code, and salaries and wages again is the most is the highest uh, cost center that we have. Next slide. Now, on a year-to-date basis, uh, bus advertising continues to exceed baseline. Investment income continues to uh, exceed baseline by. 400% and Staple Street Center leases is almost 100% of base. Next slide. A snapshot of our year to date uh, operating results is total revenues is at 7,383,673 and expenses at 7,480,111. Uh, we do have a, uh, a shortage. Rev uh, expenditures exceeded revenues by 
96,438, but that is expected because this is the second month into the year, and normally, historically, three months out of the year, our sales tax come in pretty low, but that'll pick up after March. Next slide. Next slide. Okay, this is our year-to-date uh, expenditure layout. And again, we have a salaries and wages representing 36% of the pie, benefits at 17% of the pie. Then the next uh, largest cost center is purchase transportation at 22%, leaving the rest of the uh, small percentages to GNA. Next slide. Uh, again, expenses by object, lay out the uh, year-to-date expenses uh, in these cost elements uh, with uh, salaries and wages and purchase transportation showing the biggest uh, piece of the pie. Next, here we have our fair recovery ratio. Uh, we do show uh, a declining uh, trend from 2018, but that is uh, uh, due to the pandemic. But if you notice, in 2023, we did have a small increase. Next slide. January sales tax. Here is a 12-month uh, uh, trend, sales tax trend, that shows that sales tax has been uh, uh, just uh, posting sales uh, that are just uh, very favorable against budget and do show growth when compared to the same period last year. Next slide. Here's another uh, comparison of our sales tax. We only have one month to compare, which is the actual that we received for January. And the year to, over year for the month of January, shows an increase of 6.79%. And, uh, and the budget comparison is 2.2%. So as long as we show that we are in line with the budget, we feel very, very positive about our sales tax and our projection. Any questions? <laughs> okay, with nope. that, would you like to roll into a procurement, please? Thank you. The procurement update, are we? Yes, okay. Christina. Oh, thank you. Good morning, Christina Perez. I'm Director of Procurement. Are we doing that? Our first slide, we have our current procurements out. If you look at our website, you'll see Articulating Boom Lift. Um, which will come to you for a review in April and board in May. We have our bus part supply, which will be coming to you in April for committee and board review in May to execute the first option year on that contract. We have out currently two diesel forklifts, and that is a firm fixed supply one-time purchase that will come to you in May committee and in um, board in June. We are currently out for our windstorm and hail insurance coverage. That is going to be for a term of one year. That's going to come to you in um, May committee and board in June. We also have our um, occupational medical services out. So that's going to be a three-year um, contract that's going to come to you in June and board review in July. And last but not least, um, the purchase and restoration repurposing of the Quayburg Bank. And that's going to come to you um, committee in July and board review in August. This slide is um, CEO Signature Authority and um, three month outlook. So we have our generator services. We are going to be executing the first one year option for that. Um, 
for a total cost of $21,917. Next, we have our memorandums with REAL, um, Demand Response Services. That's going to be um, an agreement for one year for uh, $34,603. And we have our commercial custodial services. We will be executing the second one-year option um, on that contract for 33000 685. We also have our annual actuarial services, our employees defined benefit plan coming to us soon. That should be um, 22,000. 22, and then we have our real time passenger information system of Translope for no more than 45,000. And last but not least, our Marina mm -hmm. rental space mm -hmm. that we do continuously. Any questions? Oh, excuse me. Thank you, Ms. Perez. Are there any questions from the board? Okay. Good job. Thank you. Uh, next, if we can please have Derek come forward. I, I want to be polite and call you by your last name, Derek, but I'm going to always say it a little bit off, so... Don't, don't worry, I'm used to, when me. people stop and pause, I know that they're talking about me <laughs> I someplace. Should know. So. I should be able to roll it out by That's now. That's why I would say Derry D. <laughs> I apologize. It's all good. Good morning again. So can you, um, yeah. yeah, pronounce your last name? <laughs> yeah, first. tutorial please real quick. Mayjack. Mayjack. That's easy. Like a bike. Why can't you spell it that way? M-A-Y-J-A-C-K. <laughs> That's what everybody says. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayjack. <laughs> <laughs> Make it easy for everybody. <laughs> All right. The board priority for this is public image and transparency. So for the highlights of February, we had a 34.4% increase in our passenger trips to 256,271. Our revenue service hours increased by 3.5% and our revenue service miles increased by 8.3%. And both of those are mainly tied to the increases in B-Line and the van pool service. For the, here's a graph showing our trend for the ridership 2019, and 22, and 23. Again, our system overall was up 34.4%, but it's still down 39.7% compared to pre-COVID. Our fixed route system was up 34.6%, st still down 42.2% compared to pre-COVID. Our B-Line services, we're up 21.1% and are now we're down 17.4% compared to pre-COVID. Our FlexiB service in Port Aransas was up 64.2% compared to last February and down 9.8% compared to pre-COVID. Our van pool services were up 55.7% and up 183.9% compared to pre-COVID. And our rural services, which are Real and Pisano, were up 72.7% for February, but down 62% compared to pre-COVID. And our year-to-date system overall is up 34.9%. The fixed route system being similar at 34.8%. B-line services were up, are up 24.7% year-to-date. FlexiB service is up 70% year-to-date. Van pool is up 55.5%, and the rural services are up 109.4% year-to-date. For our on-time performance, there's no issues here. This is a list of our current projects impacting our, our fixed route services. I will say that uh, the Winnebago one there will hopefully be eased up in um, May when we'll have Lake Street accessible to us, so we'll be able to service the entire Hillcrest area in the backside of the over Williams Center instead of being on the access road where we're at now. This is a list of upcoming bond projects and other projects that will impact our fixed route services. There are B-line performance metrics that did meet the, the standard for February at 2.5, and there's no issues with our miles between road calls there. And we did see a slight increase in our monthly wheelchair boardings for the month. We did have a high amount of customer assistance forms again at 19. That did include a commendation and our miles between road calls and our large bus fleet was uh, far above our standard 11,839, so no issues there. With that, I'll take any questions that you have. 
Any questions? Thank you, <laughs> Mr. Majek. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, with that, we'll move to the next item, board chair report. I have nothing to contribute other than fantastic job to staff, and we just appreciate you all a great deal. And Mr. Rindo. Uh, Director Coleman, any comments? Well, at this time, Madam Chair. Director Salazar. Good job, Madam Chair. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. On the fly, Director Maynard. I would like to say um, congratulations for all the awards. It's um, obvious that you all work really hard um, within the organization and in our community, and your work is just shining through, and we appreciate all your, your hard work and efforts. Thank you. Good comments. Director Wilbrandt. Good work, team. Thank you. All right, with that, we shall adjourn at 10.06 a.m. on April the 5th.